It's October 28th, 2024, and we've got a major weather system coming together over the western U.S., and it's about to cause a lot of problems for pretty much everybody across the country. We've got an SPC Day 3 slight risk of severe weather for close to 11 million people from Kansas City all the way down into Oklahoma City and North Texas, Dallas, and Austin. You guys are in play as well, but we're looking at a little bit less intense storms down there. If you're in the yellow, that's where we think we could see potential potentially some very large hail, some damaging winds, and maybe even an isolated tornado or two. Now this is all being caused by this dip in the jet stream right here. Anytime you see one of them bad boys in the western side of the United States, it usually means that we're about to have a big fight between cool and warm air, okay? This trough allows for cold Canadian air to infiltrate down into the Rockies, and it also provides a lot of leeway for warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico to come up out in front of it and uh, this is very common in fall as we literally go into the fight between summer and winter these big troughs often spark severe weather outbreaks in the central u.s and that's exactly what we expect to happen here so as we go into the day tomorrow on tuesday we are going to have some cooler air starting to move up against some warmer air and we are going to see some storms we do have a marginal risk of severe weather for tomorrow this is more for like minneapolis down towards eastern portions of of Nebraska, and it does also go down into Oklahoma and Kansas as well, but this is going to be much more scattered, and I think some hail is going to be our biggest problem. A couple of tornadoes are going to be possible, but uh, this is not going to be as intense as Wednesday, because you see on Wednesday, the big trough really starts to eject, so it starts to move a little bit more, okay? So there's more energy, there's more action happening in the atmosphere. You can see that there's a streak of the jet stream that's actually uh, intensified, where we've got some stronger winds wrapping around the bottom of that trough and then we've just got the cool air and the warm air slamming against each other and this is going to lead to likely a severe weather outbreak especially in Oklahoma, Kansas and portions of Missouri. Here's a more simplified look at this process on the simulated radar from the NAM 12 kilometer model. The first thing that we're really going to see out of this storm system is the heavy snow. You heard that right. Heavy snow is going to be possible in the higher elevations of Colorado. It's going to be possible in Utah, Wyoming, Port portions of Montana, and it's going to come down pretty decently at times. I, I do expect that we're going to see some winter storm warnings as a result of this, but the winter side of this storm is not going to be the main event, okay? Once again, uh, during the evening hours tomorrow, we do expect there to be some isolated storms over here in the north central United States. We're not seeing much here on the NAM. However, I do think that we're still going to see some convection, but we do very clearly see the storms popping up on Wednesday, especially after we get after 5 p.m. Look at this, 8 p.m. You can see even on this not so high resolution model, we've got some impressive storms popping up here in Kansas, down into Texas and Oklahoma. These are going to be our storms that are capable of producing damaging winds, large hail, and maybe even an isolated tornado. Now, this is going to turn into a big old squall line, especially as we go into the early morning hours on Thursday. We're going to have strong, potentially damaging winds as far north as up into southern portions of Iowa, down into Missouri, and of course, back down into Texas as well. It'll be very late in the evening or early in the morning on Halloween before we're dealing with these storms in places like Austin, Texas. But once again, I think the winds are going to be a big problem here as we go deeper into the evening. And then if I push this out as far as we can go, we get to about 2 p.m. on Halloween. You can see that the storms do continue to move into the Arkansas area, maybe Louisiana a little bit, southern Illinois, but they're probably going to be below severe limits at this point. We do expect a little bit of uh, snow, some cold rain on the back side here in the UP of Michigan up into portions of Canada and Wisconsin, but really the severe weather threat is going to be mostly over on Halloween. It's just going to be quite cold if you're behind this line, and it's going to be really warm if you're in front of the line. And then of course, if you're right on the line, it's going to be kind of rainy. But here's the reason why we're also concerned about maybe some tornadoes on Wednesday, okay? I showed you the 500 millibar wind speeds. That's the jet stream. We also have something that we look at called the lower level jet. And whenever these two things interact with each other in such a way that it allows for counterclockwise wise rotation. It's something that we really have to keep in mind as we're making our forecasts. So there's not a ton of instability with these storms. There's not a ton of moisture. What there is a ton of though is uh, kinematics. We've got a ton of wind shear and you can see here that especially after 8 p.m. we get these really strong winds just above our heads here at the 850 millibar level and that coincides right with the precipitation that's going to be popping up and that's why I do believe that we're going to have maybe a little bit of an overnight tornado threat 
on Wednesday into Thursday. Now, I don't think it'll last very long. I don't think that we're going to see like a huge tornado outbreak or anything. But anytime you see this much uh, wind shear associated with a storm system like this, you have to consider the reality of some tornadoes. The good news is, is that by the time those lower level jet stream winds really start ramping up, it's going to be after dark and it's going to be around the time that the line of storms is going to be more linear and it's not going to be super cellular. So that could help us avoid some of the tornado activity. However, if you live anywhere inside of that yellow area or even the dark green, make sure you are weather aware on Wednesday. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Know what you're going to do just in case that warning does come through. And of course, we're going to have so much more information on that right here in a moment. But first, let's shout out today's awesome sponsor. Delete me. Your personal data is yours again. Did you know that data brokers are selling your personal information online? I don't care how insignificant you think your personal information is. It's probably happening to you. That's right. Anybody can sneak in there and buy details like your address, your phone number, and more. This puts you at extreme risk for identity theft, stalking, and even targeted harassment. That's why I use and trust Delete Me to keep my information as private as possible. Delete Me removes your data from hundreds of data broker websites. They can remove thousands of pieces of your personal information from the internet. And the cool thing about Delete Me is it's not just about you as an individual or me as an individual. If you've got a family, they've also got a family plan. And with that family plan, you can safeguard your loved ones as well. Are you ready to take full control of your online privacy? Well, here's how you can do it. Go to joindeleteme.com slash Ryan and use code Ryan for 20% off. That's 20% off all consumer plans. Or if you're technologically inclined, scan this QR code right here and it's going to do all the hard work for you. And that's going to take you to the website. Once again, joindeleteme.com slash Ryan and it's going to allow you to take advantage of that discount. Don't wait. Protect yourself and your family today over at joindeleteme.com slash Ryan. There's a link at the very top of the description and I just can't thank Delete Me enough for sponsoring this video. It always means a lot whenever we get a sponsor. So thank you and let's get back into the forecast. All right, let's zoom out and take a look even farther into the future. There's our big trough moving along. Everybody out in front of this thing is going to be super warm. It's going to be a record warm Halloween for a lot of people on the East Coast. We were talking about maybe this being a very warm Halloween for places like Minnesota and Wisconsin. However, things are moving a little bit faster than we originally thought they would. So now it's actually going to be quite cool as you're going to be on the backside of that trough as we actually go into the day on Halloween. Halloween. So things are going to be quite warm over here in the eastern U.S. And that pattern just continues, man. Look at this next one. There's another huge trough and ridge pattern that we're about to be in as we go into early November. This is likely going to spark several storm systems. Lots of severe weather outbreaks are going to be possible in the central, maybe even closer to the Ohio Valley as well, if this pattern actually comes true. And we're going to see several days where it's not going to feel like November. If you're in Kentucky, if you're in the northeast, mid-Atlantic, southeast, anywhere over here on the positive side of this trough. Honestly, it's not going to feel like fall at all, even though we're going to be getting deeper into November. Now, it's the opposite over here in the West. Uh, if you're in this side of the trough, things are going to be really, really cool and wet, likely for portions of California as we get these pseudo atmospheric rivers diving in to carry some Pacific moisture over into the central U.S. and then eventually spark up some more storms for us. But as I scrub through this timeline here, do you notice anything else? Yep. We've still got our tropical system that we're watching down here in the Caribbean. Still showing up on the GFS. It's not showing anything incredible. However, it is still showing a storm here. This one actually has it making landfall around the Dominican Republic and uh, Haiti around November 4th. So we'll see what happens there. Right now, though, it's still too far out to be very confident in exactly what's going to happen with this storm. The National Hurricane Center still has their eyes on this as well. Okay, the latest update has a 40% percent probability of this turning into a tropical depression before the weekend. Okay, so sometime this week, I do think that we're going to have a fully formed tropical depression down here somewhere near Jamaica. There's not a track yet, though. We don't know which way it's going to go. We don't know how intense it's going to get. We don't know if it's going to make landfall in Jamaica, Cuba, or Haiti. All that stuff is still up in the air. However, and this is going to continue to happen as we get closer to this thing actually forming, we are starting to get more data. We are starting to get a little bit more of an understanding of what this storm could do. And one of the things that we look at is the Euro ensembles. This shows us an overall average of where the tracks of this storm go whenever you run 100 different model runs, okay? You run 100 different models with the same starting conditions, and
and you get 100 different outcomes. What's the average of those 100 different outcomes? That's what we're looking at here. And what's really interesting to me is that the tracks actually are skewing a little bit to the west. So this would be a worst case scenario for our folks over in the Yucatan Peninsula. It'd be a worst case scenario for our folks in Cuba, especially because that means that the storm's going to have quite a bit of time over some very warm waters, and it could potentially turn into a stronger storm before maybe making landfall in one of those places. And also, unfortunately, it does open up the possibility of the storm coming into the Gulf of Mexico as well. And once it's in there, as we all know, there's no reason for it to stop growing. The Gulf is still very warm. The only thing that we've got on our side right now are those big troughs that are coming through. As long as we can get the storm to kind of slam into one of those, it'll likely weaken or maybe, you know, get out of here quicker. But let's just not even think about that right now. Let's just hope that it doesn't go into the Gulf because that's probably going to be a worst case scenario. The best thing that can happen is that it just kind of meanders up, goes between Jamaica, Cuba, and Haiti, and then weakens on its way up towards Bermuda. And that is still a possibility right now. There's no reason to kind of talk about it anymore. However, more than yesterday, I guess, it's slightly more concerning. So if you do live along the coast in the Gulf, I would definitely be keeping an eye on this one. Don't be scared. Be prepared. The good news is, is I really do think that after we get past this, whatever this ends up being, we should be done talking about tropical weather for quite some time. And the focus is going to continue to be on these wild, oscillating weather patterns here in the mainland U.S. The 6 to 10 day temperature outlook is plum wild, okay? November 2nd through November 6th is going to be one to remember. If you are from Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, all the way down into Dixie Alley, New Orleans, the panhandle of Florida, it is going to be downright hot for November standards. And then the same thing can be said for you guys over in the West, especially in the Southwest, Southern California. It's going to be abnormally cold for you guys as those big troughs are dipping down into the Western U.S. And remember, what do we always talk about? I've said it probably an annoying amount of times on this channel. <laughs> Anytime you get, you know, conflicting air masses like this, the middle ground serves as a battleground. And the battle between air masses like this takes place in the form of rain and thunderstorms. So as we look at who's going to see the most rain over the next seven days, it lines up perfectly with that barrier. And by the way, we're going to see a lot of rain in Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, portions of Wisconsin, Oklahoma, and Texas as well. Some places are going to see up to four to five inches of rain over the next seven days. Much welcomed stuff, I know. There might be some isolated problems with flash flooding though. Additionally, we're going to see quite a bit of rain on top of what we've already received uh, in the Pacific Northwest over the next little bit. And most of this stuff that you're seeing over here in the Rockies is going to fall as frozen precipitation. So there is a slight chance right now that we're going to go live on Wednesday. Okay, so right now it's 25% chance. If we have an enhanced risk of severe weather, especially if we get a 10% chance of tornadoes with the SPC outlook, that's almost a shoe in for a live stream. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you got notifications on so you don't miss that. Otherwise, hopefully it'll be a couple days before you hear from us because that means that nothing crazy has changed and there's nothing to worry about. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.